Hey guys, it's Corey from CoreyBakerFilmmaker.com, and I just saw Roma, written and directed by Alfonso Cuaron. So in a first for the movie reviews that I've done here, uh, this one I watched at home at the OTA studios here, deep uh, high above the 110 freeway in Los Angeles, California, and uh, watched it on Netflix. Didn't have the studio experience, or didn't have the movie experience, just uh, watched it all here on the couch with Rachel and Rob and Roxy, and uh, it was, I, I, while I probably would have preferred to see it in a theater, uh, because it, it's so epic and grand and, and sensational, it, 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 it played fine on Netflix, and was actually pretty good for me, because uh, it's two and a half hour long movie, so being able to like, an hour and a half in, hour 20 minutes in, just taking a little break, walking away from the whole thing, and, uh, you know, sort of letting the palate cleanse a little bit before the second half of the movie was actually uh, really good for me. I would recommend, uh, as I would for almost anything that you watch on any movie you watch on TV, even at home, uh, do your best to make sure that it's in the best possible version, the best possible viewing experience. Uh, we wanted to, we turned off the Christmas tree, turned off all the lights, uh, just put a backlight behind the TV. We have the sound system. It's a good, a nice TV. So uh, it was a wonderful viewing experience without any kind of uh, problems. And that's, that's exactly what you want from a movie like Roma. So Roma follows the story of Cleo, who is a maid for like this middle upper class family uh, living in Mexico City. And for a good, it, it, I'll, I'll tell you this, this movie takes a long while to get going. It, it, it feels like you're sort of living within the, the atmosphere more than you are living within the plot or living within a story to be told. But as the movie progresses, the the waiting that you do earlier, the the contemplation that you are putting on on you know extended long takes and stuff like that, it really rounds into form, and it it, it becomes it, it's it's worthy of it. And sometimes when I'm watching movies, as I'm watching them, I start making calculations as to what the director is trying to do here. Like, what is he trying to express? Uh, and why is this, why is this so methodical? Why is it taking, why are we on, like, the, so the opening shot of the movie is of water going across uh, the bricks in the driveway. And, you know, it's three minutes long, four minutes long, something like that. And he, immediately you start saying, like, all right, why are we staying on this shot? Why are we staying here? Uh, obviously, the credits are playing behind or playing in front of it, but uh, it's a rather long static shot. And then the water starts coming in. The water starts going over the bricks. And in the reflection of the water on the bricks, we can see the world opening up. And we can see the plane flying by, which is a, a big thing that a, a nice touchstone throughout the movie is the planes flying above. Uh, and. Pretty early on, I realized that this is all sort of setting up your ability to to really admire the scenes that will be coming later. There are a lot of scenes that happen throughout this movie that are all on these long, single takes. So uh, there's a, a family discussion that happens at dinner at one point, and the camera is set up sort of like, you know, they're at a, at a restaurant, so all of our, all the characters we care about are sitting around a table, and what would appear to be, like, the next table over is where the camera is, looking in on the conversation, and it sort of sets up like you're watching this from afar, and then there's another scene later on, I don't want to give away too many spoilers on this, uh, because anyone could watch it any time, and I don't want to, like, ruin the, the fun, but there's, there's a scene in the hospital later in the movie, which is just soul crushing. And you're watching from, it's just the, 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 the whole take probably takes, you know, three, four or five minutes, something like that, where it's just on the side of the hospital bed. 
and you can sort of see everything that's going on around it. And it's, uh, I, in a completely different way, it sort of reminded me of when I saw a girl with the dragon tattoo and there was a very long, very hard to watch, uh, rape scene in that movie but it was all done on one single long take where it's like you were sitting in the room watching it. And Quran's ability to translate these moments, these cinematic moments into sort of putting you into the situation gives you a, it's, it's really, it's, it's a masterclass on, on how to, to raise tension and to, uh, make the audience feel what you want them to feel. And it, it's shockingly good. Another great thing about this movie is uh, there is not anybody in it that almost anyone would really know. So the the lead uh, playing Cleo, Yalitzia Aparatio, is... Uh, yeah, she, she's never done anything before. She has no credits on IMDb other than Roma. But she does a masterful job. She does a, a tremendously great job. And it, I, I feel like it's not... The way in which the universe carries itself in this movie allows her to just try and be as natural as possible. And this can, this can be difficult for even our best actors, but it's... It's really... Especially in this movie, it is so... She, she just seems like we're it, it feels like a documentary we're just watching the story play out like we just happen to have cameras running in this mid 70s Mexico City and I, I, I can't imagine that the SAG awards or the uh, Academy are going to nominate her or give her an award because that would be kind of offensive to all the all the trained actors who have put in amazing performances this year but she was she was uh, on a level all by herself and as a first timer it was just incredibly well done and it really I, I I think if anything this whole the whole of Roma speaks to what an incredible filmmaker Quran is from start to end because every little bit of it, is masterful. He shot this movie himself, uh, so he was his own DP on this one, as well as writing and directing it and editing it. So it was a full, full it was the, the the full Monty for the filmmaker. But it was so like every little bit just has his touches on it. The production design is incredible. The 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 things that we see in the frame are just like uh, uh, there's a there's a scene where there's a forest fire and everyone's running into the forest to try and put out the fire and the flames, the, the, the way that the people are like sort of gathered around the flames is, is hauntingly beautiful. And it's, it's the type of thing that like, that's what a great production designer does. That's what an incredible team around you allows you to do. It allows you to set up this universe, point the camera at it and get it all in. And it's, it's, I, I think it for any filmmakers out there, it's a must watch. It's it's absolutely beautiful. One last thought before I depart. So this story is deeply personal to Quran. Uh, the the kid by the name of Paco in the in the movie is supposed to be Quran. This was his life, uh, and the he's sort of writing a love letter in film to the maid who helped raise him. And by putting it in her perspective as opposed to his, you get to sort of get this whole complete picture of how thankless and how incredible her life was, even though she never really gets the... At no point in the movie does she get the fulfillment of, a, of it all. Like, it... it if, if we would have put this movie from the perspective of Paco looking up on it, I think it would have been a completely different film. Staying with Cleo and staying on her reactions is everything. And I, I, it's one could say that the, 
the story, the plot might be lacking a little bit, but it's it's the type of film that once you let it, I I, I didn't record this right away, so we watched it on Saturday. I'm recording this on Tuesday. I've had a couple days to sort of think about how I feel about this movie, and with each passing day, I I find it more and more brilliant. And the the choices that were made along the way are incredible. And even though there isn't a, it, it's not you know filled with car chases and shootouts and everything like that. It's it's it just speaks so poignantly poignantly to how Quran feels about this woman and the sacrifices she made so that him and his family could live a better life. And I've. It's it's like being able to read people's love letters. It's it's so touching. Donde esta leaderboard? Uh, this is the first time since doing these reviews that I have watched a movie at home. So right up there, home Netflix. Uh, going on to the movie leaderboard. It's so it. it I, I love this movie. I really do. Uh, all around are just all-star performances by not just the cast, but the crew. Uh, and Quran specifically. Uh, it's so hard to... like, exactly figure out how to properly rate something like this because it's not... It's like looking at, you know... Michelangelo's and then going to a Picasso because it's it's almost a different thing than other movies that you get but it, in in its own way and its own specialty it is more beautiful than you would expect so for Roma I give an 8.8 .8. it'll be number 2 on the leaderboard now and really, it, it's it's an incredible piece. I, I recommend that everyone see it. If you're a filmmaker, though, especially you have to you have to just see what he did with this. It, it, it's it's uh, it's a masterpiece by Koran. Like and sometimes when you you could see that this is sort of like a passion project for him, and that he is coming from a very particular place with it. But and sometimes when you give filmmakers just too much leeway to be able to, to create, uh, it it can be difficult. Sometimes you need an, an, a, a a daddy to like string it in a little bit, just to make it make it right. But then in this one, he's just it, it, he's in a class all by himself, and is an absolute must see. Anyway, that's it for me. Uh, if you want more of me, you can go to my website, CoreyBakerFilmmaker.com. Facebook.com forward slash Cory Baker film at Legend CB5 on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, like I had said in the last review, I will be home for the Christmas holidays. Uh, I will be absolutely trying to uh, see some movies while I'm home and do some reviews on them, whether or not they will post. This coming Thursday prior to New Year's Eve is uh, questionable, but there will be new movies, new theaters, a whole bunch of great stuff for you to enjoy starting in 2019. Uh, yeah, that's it. If you have anything you want me to see, just send it along social media, comment below, uh, like this video if you enjoyed it. And yeah, I guess I'll be seeing you in 2019. So adios.